Hello everyone, welcome to CUET Political Science. In this second episode, we will discuss about nation building and its problems. First of all, let's discuss about the legacy of partition. India's journey to independence in 1947 was overshadowed by the painful experience of partition. The two-nation theory advocated by the Muslim League led to the creation of two separate nation-states, India and Pakistan. This theory, premised on religious identity, resulted in the division of British India into areas where Muslims formed the majority, leading to the creation of Pakistan and areas where Hindus formed the majority, which remained with India. However, the partition process was marked by complexity and significant challenges. Now moving on to process of partition. The process of partition was initiated with the Muslim League's promotion of the two-nation theory in 1940. According to this theory, areas with a Muslim majority should form a separate state. However, the demarcation of borders based on religious lines led to communal riots and violence across the subcontinent. The partition plan eventually led to the creation of Pakistan, comprising two separate territories, East and West Pakistan, separated by Indian territory. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, the frontier Gandhi, opposed the two-nation theory, but NWFP merged with Pakistan despite his protest. Another problem belonged to minorities on both sides of border, that is, lakhs of Hindus and Muslims and Sikhs from both the sides were left with no option except to leave their homes. Challenge of Refugee Resettlement Partition resulted in one of the largest migrations in human history with millions of Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs forced to abandon their homes. The violence during partition was unprecedented, with communal zones forming in major cities like Lahore, Kolkata and Amritsar. People faced immense hardships as they fled to seek refuge in unfamiliar territories. Women in particular were vulnerable to abduction and forced conversion. Furthermore, the partition not only divided people but also assets leading to logistical and administrative challenges. Integration of princely states India also had to address the integration of the princely states into the new nation. Covering a significant portion of British India, these princely states had the option to join India, Pakistan or remain independent. Sardar Patel played a crucial role in persuading the princes to accede to India using diplomacy and in some cases military intervention. While most states joined India peacefully, others like Hyderabad and Kashmir posed significant challenges. Nehru's Approach Under the leadership of Jawaharlal Nehru, the interim government took a firm stance against the potential disintegration of the Indian Union. However, the Indian National Congress faced criticism from the Muslim League for its approach to the accession of princely state. The efforts of Sardar Patel were instrumental in convincing the princes to join India. Instrument of Accession The majority of princely states peacefully joined the Indian Union before August 15, 1947 by signing the Instrument of Accession, indicating their agreement to accede in India. However, several princely states including Junagadh, Hyderabad, Kashmir and Manipur faced significant challenges in their accession. First is Hyderabad. Hyderabad, the largest princely state ruled by the Nizam, initially entered into a standstill agreement with India in November 1947 to maintain the status quo during negotiations. However, unrest erupted in the Telangana region, leading to opposition against the Nizam's rule by the peasantry and women. Responding to the unrest, the Nizam deployed the Razakar's paramilitary force escalating tensions. Eventually, in September 1948, the Indian government intervened with military action, leading to the surrender of the Nizam and Hyderabad's accession to India. Second is Kashmir. Kashmir, with a Muslim-majority population and a Hindu ruler, Maharaja Hari Singh Dogra became a contentious issue. 
In October 1947, Pakistan sent tribal infiltrators to capture Kashmir, prompting the Maharaja to seek Indian military assistance. The Indian Army successfully repelled the infiltrators from the Kashmir Valley, after which Maharaja Hari Singh signed the instrument of accession with the government of India. Third is Manipur. The Maharaja of Manipur, both Chandra Singh, signed the instrument of accession shortly before independence. The Indian government assured the maintenance of Manipur's internal autonomy. However, public pressure led to elections based on universal adult franchisee in June 1948, resulting in Manipur becoming a constitutional monarchy. There were differences of opinion in the Legislative Assembly regarding a merger with India, with Congress in favour and other political parties opposed. Nevertheless, the Maharaja was influenced to sign a merger agreement in September 1949, causing long-lasting resentment and anger in Manipur. Organization and Reorganization of States Following independence, the reorganization of states became necessary to ensure administrative efficiency and respect linguistic and cultural diversity. The colonial boundaries drawn by the British did not consider linguistic and cultural identities. The State's Reorganization Commission, established in 1953, recommended redrawing boundaries based on linguistic principles leading to the formation of linguistic states. Political conflicts over language However, the decision to reorganize states based on linguistic lines faced opposition with concerns about potential disruption and disintegration. Despite this, movements like the Vishal Andhra movement in Andhra Pradesh led to the formation of linguistic states. The creation of Andhra Pradesh set a precedent leading to similar demands across the country. Outcomes of Reorganization The formation of linguistic states strengthened regional identities and fostered democratic politics. It provided a more democratic response to linguistic and cultural aspirations, thereby strengthening national unity. Despite initial concerns, linguistic reorganization proved to be a unifying force rather than a divisive one. Creation of new states Over the years, India witnessed the creation of several new states to address regional imbalances and cultural identities. A bilingual Bombay state encompassing present-day Maharashtra and Gujarat underwent partition into Gujarat and Maharashtra in 1960 following public protest. By 1966, the call for a Punjabi-speaking state resulted in the division of Haryana and Himachal Pradesh from Punjab. In 1972, Meghalaya was formed out of Assam alongside the separate establishment of Tripura and Manipur as states. Nagaland achieved statehood in 1963. Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh came into existence in 1987. Subsequently, demands for separate states emerged due to differences in regional culture and development. Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand and Jharkhand were established in 2000, while Telangana was carved out of Andhra Pradesh in 2014. India's journey towards nationhood has been a complex and challenging one, marked by partition, integration of princely states and reorganization of states. Despite these challenges, India's commitment to democracy, unity in diversity and respect for cultural identities has strengthened its position as a vibrant and pluralistic nation. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.